keep working, just keep working, just keep working. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> cool. He told to me to throw a top yeah, water out there. It. Threw it out there, and this guy smoked it right on top of the water. The best blow up I've ever seen. It was awesome. What's up everybody? So I hope you're having a great day and I've been wanting to make this video for a while. And I get asked this a lot and it's like, Jack, I'm new to the area or I just started fishing or I got my little son and now that I have a son too, I think about these things. You just want a place to go fish. You don't really know the area or you know, you don't really know how things go seasonally. So in this video, I wanna talk about like the top fishing spots in Pensacola. And if you stick to the end, I'm gonna talk about my favorite way to fish Pensacola. I think that you might actually like this because we're pretty much world renowned for our fishing here in Pensacola, if I don't say so myself. I mean, Pensacola is a great place and I've thoroughly enjoyed my 37 years of living in and around it besides that when I went in the army. And if you happen to be moving to Pensacola, Orange Beach, Gulf Shores, uh, Navarre, Destin, and you're looking for a real estate agent have to be one i will include that down in the description box my email contact information and let's get into these things all right so you know that fishing is seasonal and especially here in pensacola a lot of species migrate to and from and uh, a lot of fishing can be seasonal um, especially like in the spring and the mackerel start coming in the pompano so you just kind of kind of know your seasons and uh, you can just google them or go on the fwc website and they'll pretty much tell you like what is seasonal to what area and what how many fish in the bag limits you're allowed to keep always be aware of that because you know they change all the time i mean we're down to one redfish i think now we can keep and that's just wild so starting from the top and if you've watched my videos from the beginning of this channel you'll see that i used to fish the three mile bridge a lot it's uh, one of the top redfish fisheries anywhere anytime for redfish okay and but the three mile bridge has been destroyed and rebuilt in the last few years and uh it's been a lot of construction and a lot of hammering so it, it might not be where it used to be but it's still a great place and you know they used to have a fishing uh pier side or you could fish from the bank but if you're able to get out there by boat or by kayak which i did a lot from on this channel you can get on those big redfish and we're talking about some massive ones 40 inches 30 inches 35 inches and you can catch them all night long and, you know, there's a little trick to it but the amount of redfish that are there has always been amazing you can catch bluefish Spanish mackerel you can troll for all kinds of stuff there's a lot of sharks a lot of sharks but those are fun to catch too so if you're starting in the area and you have a boat or a kayak or you're able to fish from the bank and they open up both sides of the bridge again that's a really good place to go my next one i'm gonna go ahead and cover all the bridges first so the uh, bob sites bridge is really great because well it's a bridge it's tidal allows you to get to deep water by walking there and you can go in from both sides of the Bob Sites Bridge and fish. So you're gonna catch a lot of Spanish mackerel, you're gonna see trout in there in the winter and some into the, into the spring, you're gonna see, heck, I've even heard of people catching tuna back in the day off that bridge when the water was clean. But it's just gonna allow you to target a lot of different fish, black drum and sheep's head when they're migrating through. So if you're looking for a good spot to just go, try there. You know, uh, whether you're bottom fishing or you're top water plugging, uh, or you're or you're running a, a a big rattle trap for big redfish, it's a good spot. And you know, if if you're just looking to go out for an afternoon, there's a pier at the base of it that goes out, and then there's the actual bridge. Okay, so moving right along. I'm gonna go to the Pentacola Pier, which the piers are amazing. And they allow you to get some deep water and catch some pretty exotic species right off the, the beach. And there's a lot of good restaurants right there. So you can kind of mix the two for a good outing. It used to be like eight bucks to go on the pier, but um, you know, it's probably gone up a little bit because of, you know, inflation. It's always been a great place. And if it's your first time on the pier, know that there's an etiquette to the pier and uh the end of the pier is kind of for the uh veterans and it can get pretty wild pretty fast when the tarpon come in when the king mackerel are running and then when the when the uh, kobe are running but on a day where there's nobody there it's all yours and you can catch one of those and these piers are all up and down the gulf coast you got okaloosa walton which is amazing during the tarpon run exotic species like king mackerel and 
Uh, I've even heard of them catching wahoo off the Navarre Pier, which is just down the coast from it. Navarre Pier allows you to get the deep, deep, deep water pretty close to shore. And uh, that's where a lot of the big kayak guys go, where you're able to actually paddle out to, you know, 50, 60, 70 feet of water, you know, within a few miles. And then the Pensacola Pier. Um, there's also one in Gulf Shores, I think. Uh, over there which is pretty awesome so any of the piers are an amazing interesting time great for sightseeing and you can see the fish coming and going because usually the water is pretty clear and so if you watch my camping videos where we camped at fort pickens national park um, there is a set of jetties out there that you can go and fish and there's actually a little pier out there too so we just stopped off here at the fishing pier this is a really popular spot right here when sheep's head start running sometimes they catch some snapper and stuff off of it too but pass is right there and the jetties is just around the bend. The pier over there is all broken up still. During certain times of the year it can hold some pretty cool fish. Uh, a lot of sheep's head, sometimes some mangrove snapper, some snapper will float in there and uh, you know it, it's a historical place, beautiful place and if you happen to be down there that's also a great place and that's going to roll over into one of my later categories because that place is just so beautiful. But the jetties, there's also one in, I think, Orange Beach Gulf Shores area where you can just go out and you'll find Jack Creval running through there, big redfish, you'll see Spanish mackerel, king mackerel, a lot of big species come into the jetties, sharks, um, and it makes a really fun and interesting place, but it also can be kind of dangerous. So just be mindful and know your limitation. So if you're an inshore fisherman, you know, Bayou Chico, Tahar, and Bayou Grande offers, offer some really good fishing. You know, the thing about a lot of those, you want to be around some structure or you want to be at the time of the year where the fish are on the grass beds or on the flats. If you do a little bit of research, you can really kind of figure that out. And if you're doing it by boat, you know, you can get over to some really good places. Uh, bayou Chico is pretty small, so it kind of hems the fish up pretty good, especially in the back of the bayou. And, uh, you know, fishing around structure. So if you got a boat, kayak, or you're able to get down to the water by uh, your, with your fishing poles, it also can be a pretty fun and interesting afternoon. The Navy Point Bridge is not so bad either because I happen to live by it and a lot of people fish off it and they catch stuff too. All right, so my next to last one is uh, just surf fishing. You know, especially during the Pompano run, which is kind of now the spring. Um, you've got some big long casters, sometimes you catch some Spanish mackerel. The redfish come and go up and down the beach during the winter. I mean, the bull reds, the big ones. And then you get the whiting and the jack creval that'll come in. And there's just a lot of interesting fish that come up and down the surf. And it's beautiful and you can sit out there and relax, you know, with a good, uh, good setup, you know, eight, nine foot pole, 20, 30 pound braid, five, 6,000 series reel, or some 3,000 series reels, some smaller rigs and throwing some baits, uh, you know, like spoons and jigs and, you know, Berkeley gulps. You can run into some pretty interesting stuff. There's plenty of miles of beach. Just make sure you get into the rip, the gut, you know, that's in between where the waves break and, you know, where the water's a little deeper and, and just kind of stagger your baits and you'll start running into stuff. I would say pick up a good manual on how to surf fish and it can be a very interesting thing. Even in the winter, uh, a lot of the old timers are out there on Perdido Key and Pensacola Beach and, uh, they uh, do some awesome fishing and they're really serious about it. So it's a great place to take your kid because there's not there's plenty of space and uh, except for when the tour there's a lot of tourists that come during the summer. Sometimes the beach can fill up and it's pretty hard to surf fish. So that's the only caveat to that. I love surf fishing and that rolls me into my last one, um, which is kayak fishing the Gulf. Uh, you know a lot of people like to kayak fish inshore, but if you've watched this channel. My first 300 videos or so was me fishing offshore in a kayak where I would go through the break and get past the transition line where it turns to the blue and just pedal up and just pedal back and forth up and down that and I would get in some really good fish. Lots of king mackerel, Spanish mackerel, tuna, sailfish, tarpon. I mean, pretty much any fish you're gonna catch uh, with given a few out of a big boat offshore you can catch from a kayak right off the beach and uh, it keeps you in shape keep you motivated fun during the summer to jump in the water and have a little fun so 
uh, you know, I bought most of my gear that I started out kayak fishing with from a yard sale. I, had a, I think I had a Jigmaster 500 with 30 pound braid and a, a Pen 850 with a jigging rod. And I just flip it behind me and just start paddling and whammo. So it's crazy if you can go out there and catch 20, 30, 40 pound kings or, you know, a tuna or sailfish. Things legends are made out of, out of a piece of plastic you got off Facebook Marketplace for three or four hundred bucks. Just blows my mind. Throw it on top of the car, come back, wash it off, clean your fish, and you had an amazing adventure. So Pensacola is full of some great adventures. If you just take the time to learn the area, know what each body of water has to offer. But if, you know, in leaving, uh, I would say this, if you uh, just want to go out for an afternoon and you've got some, you know, some, you know, decent gear, the pier is great. Uh, the bridges are great, the surf is great, and you'll have a good time. Um, just go onto some of the fishing forums, follow some of the Facebook pages, and when the fish show up, you'll know they're there, and it's up to you to go catch them. But if you happen to be moving to the Pensacola area, or Alabama, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, uh, Navarre, Gulf Breeze, hit me up, I have to be a real estate agent here, and I'd be happy to show you the area and talk to you about these things because I gotta show off my hometown of Pensacola and uh, these videos are the best way to do it. So my email is in the description box. Email me if you're looking for real estate or whatever I can help you with and I'll see you guys later.